You guys have asked for it, and I'm excited to start the month of Nidvember. An entire month dedicated to Tyranid lore videos where we will be talking about everything from the major high fleets to the individual gene stealer cults that are infecting the many worlds of the Imperium. I might even start my very own gene stealer cult warband, more on that in future videos. But for now, I want to begin our journey into the lore of the Great Devourer by exploring the legend of one of the most terrifying Tyranid bioforms, the Dagon Overlord. What makes this Hive Tyrant so unique is that it's been able to distinguish itself from the swarm of High Fleet Dagon, and both Imperial and Xeno forces have come to recognize this creature as a sort of ever-present Tyranid leader. But before we get into the full lore of the Overlord, allow me to introduce myself. I am your host, Gersh1, and if you're new to the channel, we post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day, so if you guys have any suggestions for any topic pertaining to the Tyranids that you guys would like us to talk about, just comment down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel if you guys want to follow along for Nidvember and make suggestions for what we're going to do in December. Uh, and also hit the like button. That's really the only way YouTube knows that we are creating great content. Uh, so by hitting the like button, it really helps out the channel. And share with your friends if they're into Tyranids, if they're excited for the Gene Stealer Codex that's coming out pretty soon. Uh, share these videos and hopefully it can inspire them to jump into the hobby or buy buy more of the hobby and then you guys can play more. But with all that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Dagon Overlord. The first recorded sighting of the Tyranid bioform that came to be known as the Dagon Overlord was during the opening days of the Battle of Castable, a hive world that was regarded as the jewel of the Orpheus salient in the Jericho Reach and one of the primary industrious hive worlds responsible for supplying a significant portion of troops and materials to the Imperial military might. This region of space was newly inducted back into the Imperial fold, and when High Fleet Dagon assaulted the sector, the Imperium understood that Castable could not fall, it had to be the planet that halted the High Fleet. The strongest defense was placed on Hive Trimalov. It was to be guarded at all cost, for it was the political heart of the planet and the center for the world's religious life. This hive city was renowned for its breathtaking cathedrals. They were immense gleaming edifices made out of marble and obsidian housing 20 billion emperor-fearing worshippers. It was here that the Overlord appeared, leading a mighty swarm of Tyranids that battered the holy spires of the capital hive. The Dagon Overlord successfully breached the outer defenses and his horde crawled through the walls, dispatching the defenders in a month-long orgy of carnage and slaughter. Like a true super predator, the Overlord did not care whether his horde assaulted soldiers or civilians. Every single living soul inside that hive city was devoured until it was devoid of any human life. Only a handful of Imperial soldiers and citizens were able to escape the fall of the hive city, and each one of them brought back the traumatizing tale of the invasion. But most terrorizing of all was the memory of the Overlord, which stood apart from even the worst horrors that the swarm had to offer. Etched into the minds of the survivors was the brooding and savage form of the Dagon Overlord. Sadly, one of the guardsmen's accounts of his encounter with the Dagon Overlord was somehow made public and has spread throughout the rank and file of the Imperial Guard in the region. It has become a terrifying tale that is read under the cover of night and away from commissars. It reads, Then suddenly I saw it. With only a slight churning to mark its rise to the surface, the monster slid into view above the cathedral ruins. Vast, loathsome, and almost godlike, it darted like a stupendous creature of nightmares to the spire, above which it flung its gigantic scaly arms, and while it bowed its hideous head, it gave a vent to the most terrifying sound. I truly think I went mad then. It is reported that sadly the guardsman then took his own life. Covered in slimy plates of chitin which constantly drip and leak fluid, the Overlord projects an aura of horror and menace like nothing else within the swarm. Its importance and power are also readily apparent when it strides alongside other Tyranid creatures. Peering into the demonic eyes of this Overlord, one can perceive a personal desire to murder, maim, and kill. It's almost as if the High Fleet was able to dig into the minds of the trillions of human souls it had consumed and create a creature with a stare that struck at the primal fear of humanity. Many xenobiologists and inquisitors with knowledge of the Overlord seem to agree that it is a unique hive tyrant evolved as a specific tool for the eradication of mankind. 
What it does to its victims is not a simple act of consumption like the other Tyranid creatures. The Dagon Overlord seems to intentionally slow down the killing process to generate as much fear and panic amongst his enemies, committing acts like impaling living victims into capillary towers and spitting enough acid onto the enemy to horrifically disfigure and then allowing them to retreat. All of these are heinous acts that are uncharacteristic of Tyranid bioforms who simply want to destroy and consume. Since its first appearance, the Dagon Overlord has been sighted in almost all of the major combat zones of the Orpheus Salient, leading swarm after swarm into the ranks of the Imperial Defenders. This has led many to believe that the Overlord is not a unique creature at all, but instead represents a new bioform of Tyranid. However, whether it is a unique entity or not, it's hard to determine when dealing with the hive mind, as it is constantly recycling its own troops. This means that the Overlord may be a single veteran of many wars, and may have even fallen countless times to the foe, only to be respawned by the hive mind over and over again. What makes this fact scarier is the cults that are forming all across the Jericho Reach and other sectors around this Tyranid figure. Because he is a fixed part of the Hive Fleet and in essence can never be defeated, he has become the embodiment of the entire Hive Fleet as a whole. These Xeno worshipper cults fixate on the stories of the Overlord and claim that he is the one true god and the true face of the Great Devourer. Without a doubt, gene stealer cults are responsible for spreading the faith of the Dagon Overlord. And that's the lore on the Dagon Overlord. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, this entire month is going to be dedicated to Tyranid, so Gene Stealer Cult and uh, the Great Devourer is going to be um, present throughout the entire month in some way, shape, or form. Mostly lore videos. Uh, I might do some terrain videos, but I was supposed to do terrain videos for October, and I'm still working on them, so those are probably going to be scattered throughout this month as well. Um, if you guys have any suggestions as far as as like what type of Tyranid topics you guys would like me to talk about, just comment down in the comment section below. I do have a Tyranid playlist that I'll put a link up above for. Um, basically, the playlist has, uh, you know, a good amount of Tyranid lore videos that I've already created. I was actually surprised that I don't have that much, but it might be because, like, the Tyranid lore itself is not that... Uh, in depth as like the orcs or the space marines or like the imperium uh, but we will see but i do need your help because i need to know what you guys want to uh, hear about uh, so comment down in the comment section below i appreciate all of your guys' support for orctober i hope november is just as amazing uh, and like i said uh, subscribe to the channel because i'm probably going to be trying to create my own gene stealer warband this is it's a it's a warband that i've been wanting to start for a really long time and I have some of the models, uh, so as I, you know, expand past the starter collector set, um, we'll see what happens and all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, but thanks so much for watching, guys, and we will talk in the comments section below. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Zanagate signing out. <laughs>